Hi, this is Eric Weinstein. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So there are two um, exogenous events that have me thinking a little bit differently today. The first is that um, this is my office and has been my office for about five years uh, here at Teal Capital. And uh, with reorganization, I'm going to be moving out of this office. And the reason that that's important is that some of you have questioned why there is a ghostly image um, on the glass window behind me. And I thought it might be interesting to talk about that. And the other thing that's motivating me is that while I was sitting in a parked car, I was uh, rear-ended rather suddenly and dramatically yesterday. Um, the airbags in the other car went off. And I got to thinking about, um, with all of the things that we do to try to extend life and make life worth living, we forget how fragile it is. And had things been a little bit different, um, I might have sustained some, some more serious injuries. And I was just put in mind of what, what really is important to accomplish before uh, we leave this beautiful world. And those two things have me um, thinking about a topic that I hadn't expected to discuss, which is the subject of who that person is and the importance of having an arch nemesis. So in my case, uh, I feel very fortunate that I have selected an arch nemesis who really suits me. And since um, I don't have a fleet of Teslas and I don't have um, ski ch chalets all over the world, uh, the one luxury item that I have that many people don't uh, is an arch nemesis. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about how important an arch nemesis can be and how you might acquire one, what thinking should go into your process, and what you might hope to get out of it. So in my case, what my belief is, is that an arch nemesis is a really important decision in your life, much like choosing a life partner, or what city you will live in, or what area you will choose uh, in which to build your skills uh, so that you might have a fulfilling profession. I think when you, when you take an arch nemesis, it's important to realize that it's not really about um, the cartoon relationships that superheroes have with their, their principal enemies. An arch nemesis is, is something much richer to me. It is in general a human being with whom you share a tremendous amount, but you differ on some subset of issues where that difference means that you cannot both win. And uh, in my case, um, what I'm very sympathetic with is the objective of my arch nemesis. And what I'm very, um, what, I'm, what I find myself divided on from my arch nemesis is the method by which we are both trying to get to this common destination. So you could think of this, uh, for example, uh, in terms of the civil rights movement. Um, where Martin Luther King and Malcolm X both probably shared many goals, uh, which was uh, true um, liberation and equality for black America, but they probably differed a tremendous amount on the means by which they were willing to get there. And both of them um, held the other in, in a great deal of respect, but may have felt very, very sharply different uh, from the other about the modalities by which they were interested in, in getting to that common objective. So in my case, the objective um, was to try to understand what the physical world was all about. What is this place in which we are having this conversation? What is the construct uh, in which you are viewing a YouTube video? Um, you can think about this from the perspective of the atoms in your screen or the photons of light that are reaching your eyeballs. But what is this strange place that, uh, that we call uh, reality? And the gentleman who is depicted over my shoulder on the, on the glass in dry erase ink um, is Garrett Lisi. And he was famous uh, or infamous several years ago as the surfer dude with the theory of everything. And he lives in Maui has somehow never seemingly really held a job that would lead to a career. He's made a couple of um, 
investment decisions which have really worked out to make sure that he doesn't have to have to work. So he, he has a very enviable lifestyle, but he's also willing to live in a van with zero security. So he's a real risk taker. And what's more, he's very interested in a, an approach to finding a theory of everything or a theory of reality, if you will, that I think is quite interesting and beautiful. I just don't think it's going to work based on a set of symmetries, um, which are, are called a Lie group for, uh, it's a fancy mathematician way of saying a collection of con continuous symmetries. But in his case, the Lie group he chose, which was also the Lie group that I found most interesting, called E8, and it's a 248 dimensional um, beast of an object. We can't really visualize it. And it is suggestive because of ways in which it combines what you might call um, regular uh, vector, vector-like objects with exotic spinner-like objects. So the thing about vectors is what gives you uh, photons and spinners is what gives you electrons. And so somehow vectors and spinners are bound together in this crazy object E8. And Garrett decided to make that the centerpiece of his attempt to unify physics. Now, despite the fact that I think Garrett's wrong, and I don't think what he's doing will, will work, he's one of the only people in the entire world who are willing to put forward what might be termed uh, something like a theory of everything. Now, you can say that it's incomplete, you can say that it's inconsistent, um, but it is clearly an attempt to explain the world that we live in using a very complicated piece of mathematical machinery. And despite the fact that I don't believe that it works or even can be made to work, it is still a direct attempt at uh, resolving the major puzzles of our, of our time rather than working on the mathematical structure of physics. So it's an attempt at an actual physical idea rather than uh, an attempt at improving the mathematics around physics, hoping that that will produce the answer. So here are the, here are the criteria that I think um, are most important when choosing an arch nemesis. First of all, it should be somebody that you, um, you want to see in this world. Uh, you should be sad if, some, if somehow your arch nemesis were to meet um, a, a bad end, because you want that person to be with you uh, and competing with you for the long haul. So it should be somebody that you would be very upset if you found out that they were suddenly dead uh, and removed um, from this mortal coil. It should also be somebody who accepts you uh, as his or her arch nemesis. I, I don't think you should just go about deciding that Elon Musk uh, or, or Donald Trump is your arch nemesis if they've never even heard of you, um, much less they don't obsess about you. So I think it's important that there be a, a level of mutuality and that you choose your arch nemesis and that your arch nemesis chooses you, or said slightly differently, that you both recognize that this is the nature of your relationship. It should also be the case that if you were to lose, you might want them to win. That's, that's a hard thing to couple to the fact that in order for them to win, you would have to lose. But both of these conditions need to be met. Um, in general, if my particular take on physics, which I call geometric unity, turned out to be vacuous, uh, I would want to find out that Garrett actually um, had a theory that was workable. It would, it would give me no pleasure to find out that he too was also incorrect. So I think um, that's a very complicated dynamic to get going. It would be better if the person was roughly your age um, and shared some of your characteristics. I think you need to be able to see uh, some of yourself in your arch nemesis. In my case, I, I feel like Garrett has been a a renegade. Um, he has broken rules, but he's also been an insider and an outsider. He has a PhD in physics, which is better than I can say where my PhD is in mathematics. Um, he has been more outside the system. Uh, I stayed longer probably in the academic game than he did. Um, so it's there is a, a sort of a degree of comparability. And the 
picture that uh, lies over my shoulder, I, I started to feel better about it when I saw uh, into um, Floyd uh, Mayweather's home after he defeated Conor McGregor. And there was a, a photograph taken of uh, Floyd Mayweather with giant pictures of him and Conor McGregor inside of his home. And so the idea that you would actually want to represent your arch nemesis inside of your uh, personal space is actually, it makes complete sense to me. So what I'd like you to think about is whether or not you're ready to choose an arch nemesis, to let that be a motivational decision, to propel you, to try to keep working on something when you feel discouraged, to use an aspect of competition which is healthy. I, uh, I'm, I'm very often reminded of my, my good friend Peter Thiel's admonition that competition is for losers. The idea that when you spend your time focusing on someone else rather than focusing on a very difficult problem, you often get distracted from what's really important and you find yourself in this kind of mimetic rivalry. Um, I think that choosing an arch nemesis is a, is a slight exception to this generally pretty good rule. Um, when I get discouraged, I don't feel like looking at physics. Uh, it does help me to think about the fact that somewhere out there, uh, Garrett is uh, catching a wave um, in, uh, in the waters off of Maui, thinking about physics and trying to push his theory forward. So I find that uh, not dispiriting or enervating, but I actually find it energizing. And, you know, I realize that because I'm going to have to leave this office, um, it falls to me, rather than some anonymous uh, cleaning person, to remove this picture off of, off of the glass. And it's on both sides of the glass. Uh, Crystal uh, Baranek, who drew this in dry erase ink, who is uh, at that point Garrett's girlfriend, um, drew it on both sides of the glass. And I remember thinking that it, it would have to be me who would take it down because uh, I, I simply wouldn't want to allow anyone else um, to remove that from, from my life. So if you don't mind, um, as a symbolic action, I'm going to uh, involve you all in the removal of this piece of artwork from, from my office and my life as I change offices. And I do want to say, particularly to young men, um, consider that a, an arch nemesis isn't something that you have to wait for. When you find somebody with whom you're competitive, where you have a lot of respect for that person, and you want that person to motivate you over a lifetime, and you feel ready to make this decision, um, remember you should only choose one, and it should be a long-term relationship. You should be in dialogue with that arch nemesis over time, and it should be energizing to you both. I just want to say, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and without further ado, um, I suppose the time has come. Be well. Thanks for watching.